there's a rumour going round that polyvericon tuning capacitors may be on the way out. It's hardly surprising. AM radio in many countries is dead and small transistor radios aren't as popular as they used to be. And the radios that are made are often digital or push button tuning. Even if that rumour isn't true, it's worth thinking how you'd cope if you weren't able to buy polyvericon tuning capacitors, or plastic dielectric as they might often be called. These capacitors often have two gangs. One is about 10 to 60 picofarad, and the other is about 10 to 160. Both those could be useful, either singly, or if you were to connect them in parallel, you'd have a total of around 220 picofarad. Although designed for receiving purposes, they can handle QRP power levels, which makes them ideal for portable antenna couplers. Things like L matches, Z matches, T matches, Pi networks, etc. Another application was for a very basic receiver, like a small regenerative or direct conversion, with a free running low gloss later. The tuning was quite difficult, especially if you hadn't achieved a form of mechanical reduction. But still you could cope, and by putting other capacitors in series and parallel, you could narrow the tuning range down to a single band and get reasonably easy tuning. Crystal control on its own, as you know from these videos, is pretty useless. But if you put a small variable capacitor in series with the crystal, you can get a few kilohertz of frequency agility. A similar arrangement was possible with ceramic resonators, with frequencies like 3.58, 7.16 or 7.2 MHz being useful for amateur equipment. In that case, you got a much wider frequency pulling range with a VXO type arrangement. But still, you did need the polyvericon tuning capacitor. So what should we do? The first thing is anything you've got that may have a polyvericon capacitor or that you can find, you should snap up. These include small transistor radios you might see in council cleanups, garage sales, second hand shops, etc. Even if the radio is no good, you should buy it for the capacitor. Tumor capacitors by themselves generally have a smaller tuning range, but if you put them in parallel with a switch bank of disc ceramic capacitors, then you'd be able to get a reasonably wide tuning range. Of course, you have to be a bit ingenious with trimmer capacitors, and there are various types you can get, but you might be able to somehow extend it so you can connect it to a knob adjustable from the front panel. So there are applications that a variable capacitor is really the best component for the job, but you can make substitutes. If you didn't want to go up to a DDS unit, maybe because you're into minimalist simplicity, then you could try diodes. Varactor diodes are those designed specifically to vary in capacitance when you change a voltage. However, other diodes have that effect as well. It's just the tuning range isn't as much. For instance, I've used power diodes like 1 in 4002s, 1 in 4004s, etc. The main difference with diodes is your minimum to maximum tuning range might not be as much as if you're using a variable capacitor. A way around that is to switch in various banks of diodes. You might have four diodes for the lower frequency part of the band and then switch a couple of those out so you only had two diodes for the higher frequency segment. Another possibility if you want a wide capacitance range, fine steps but not necessarily completely continuous tuning is have capacitors of particular values in parallel and then lots of little switches. A bit like binary, for instance you might have a bank of capacitors starting off with 5 picofarad or actually 4.7, then 10, then 22, 47, 100 and 220 picofarad. With those six capacitors and six switches, you'd have a tuning range in five picofarad steps all the way up to about 440 picofarad. That would be ideal for an antenna coupler like an L-match. I did a video where I used a similar arrangement with the inductors. If you're using the variable capacitor as the frequency determining element in a receiver, especially a direct conversion or a soup hat, then you can just substitute a DDS. 
Of course, that's a little bit difficult with regenerative receivers, but you could use a permeability tuned arrangement where you're varying the inductance, maybe sliding a brass former in and out of the coil to obtain variable tuning. And there is a guy who built a receiver that was a bit like a mousetrap, how you had a metal thing that you waved near another bit of metal and that varied the inductance. It was enough to get coverage of, say, an amateur band. So that's just a few tips for if variable capacitors go out of manufacture. They're really handy components, but it's not the end of the world if you can't obtain them new. Salvage or make do with alternatives and you'll still be able to build the radio projects you love and use.